فؤادك الايام فتا ويفعل البعض من المامور ان شق فعل سائر المامور this slide um, some of the nusakh some of the copies they don't have it and some have it and it's two lines which we're going to come to inshallah uh, ta'ala um, the reason why it was dropped out is because of the nusakh the people who copied the book it dropped out from them uh, and it doesn't mean that the author didn't say it the author did say it rather the sheikh explained that two lines this line and the line after the sheikh rahimahullah he, he, he explained it some argue and they say that the author um, he uh, wrote this in his later lives and that isn't the case he explained it early Naam. This qa'ida, which is وَيَفْعَلُ الْبَعْضُ مِنَ الْمَأْمُورِ إِنْ شَقَّ فِعْلُ سَائِرِ الْمَأْمُورِ We already spoke, spoke about this already before. And we mentioned it uh, uh, in our previous explanation, which is If a person is unable to do all the obligation, he does that which he can do. He does that which he's, that which he's able to do. And there are evidences for that in the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in the Qur'an فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Fear Allah as much as you are able. And also the Prophet sallallahu he said, the Hadith Bukhari and Muslim both narrated, ما أمرتكم به فأتوا منه ما استطعتم. Anything which I have ordered you, come with what you're able to do from it. Um, as I previously said, and I'm going to remind you all, the awamir, the commands are three types. The first type is, إذا لم يتمكن المكلف من فعل الجميع فعل ما يستطيع ما يستطيع منه. The person is unable to do all of the action. He's able to do a particular part of it. Um, the person does what he's able to do from this. And we spoke about the issue of Satrul Awra. He's unable to cover all his Awra. He covers what he can. And the rest, inshallah ta'ala, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ The second type is المأمورات من المأمورات ما إذا لم يتمكن العبد من فعله مِنْ فِعْلِ بَعْضِي سَقَطَ الْجَمِيعِ He's unable to do some, but the Sharia came and it lifted all of it from him. You don't have to do any one of them. A person cannot fast in the morning because he takes a medication in the morning. He has to take a medication which is vital, he has to take it. And we don't say, okay, after you take your medication, your fasting starts for you. No. The whole of, of the fasting is lifted from him. The third type is, من وجبت عليه رقبة في كفارة الجماع في نهار رمضان ولم يستطع إلا نصف الرقبة سقط عنه وجوب الجميع. That was the example for the second type, which is a person who can't pay, a person who can't pay, um, he can't free a slave's neck. He can only pay for part of the slave. He can only pay part. Um, all of it is lifted from him. Why would we say half? Can a slave become half? Huh? Yeah, he can. The slave, there's a slave called, he's partially slave, not fully slave. He's, he's called, uh, uh, he's a mamluk, which is muba'ad. He's muba'ad, he's partial. Two people owned him. One freed him. The other, the other one still owns him. So he's half a slave, half a free individual. You're not allowed to free the neck of that one. You have to free a full neck. Um, so that's the, sec that's, the, that's the second type. The third type is ما يقع مترددا بين هذين الأمرين It is the one that falls between the two. Which two? That which is he has to come with some of it which, which, is, where, is, which is awamir which are muba'ad. Some of the wajibat are partial. If you can't do some you can just do the rest no problem. And some of the wajibat are what? The ma'murad, the commands. Some of them are, if you can't do any one of it, all of it is uplifted from you. The third one is partial. It's half of that one and half of this one. The third type is, ما يقع متردد بين هذا الأمريني. Such as the wudu. We spoke about that. Ghusl. Is the person allowed to do wudu and also finish it with tayammum? Or is it, all of the wudu is lifted from him? The person can't do all wudu. Is all of the wudu lifted from him? And he has to do tayammum fully. 
Or does he do the much the, uh, the, the ones that he can do the wudu for? He uses it, and the remaining he used to mum. This is disputed amongst the ulama, and the reason why they dispute each other is because it is does can uh, is it to just can it can it enter it? Can that become divided? And this, the Sheikh says after that, وَكُلُّ مَا نَشَّعَ عَنِ الْمَأْذُونِ فَذَاكَ أَمْرُ لَيْسَ بِالْمَضْمُونِ We spoke about this before also slightly. Anything that occurs after permission is given to you from the legislator. And also a permission from the owner of it. Those two. The, the two the, and those are the two types of permission. Permission from the legislator. Allah gives you permission for this. Either the Qur'an mentions it or the Sunnah. Or the owner of this thing allows you to do what you want with it. He says you can do what you want with it. Um, can the shari ha, ha, shari hal daman? The permission from the shari from the shari the legislator Allah does he lift the liability of this from you? Are you liable for it? Can he lift it from you? For example, لو أذن الشارع للعبد في فعل من الأفعال أي فعله. The Sharia permitted for you to do a particular action. He permitted you. He said you can do this if you want. Does that lift from you? The, are you reliable for the, what comes out of it later? The problem that occurs? Good. The scholars replied by saying, لا يخلو, This answer doesn't, it can't get out from one of these two. First, إِنْ كَانَ إِذْنُ الشَّارِعَ لِمَصْلَحَةِ لِلْمُكَلِّفِ الْمَأْذُونِ لَهُ وَبِدُونِ أَذِيَّةٍ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ وَتَرَتِّبْ عَلَى الْفِعْلِ إِتْلَافُ مَالٍ لِلْغَيْرِ فَإِنَّ لَا يَسْقُطُ الطَّمَانِ If the Sharia permitted this issue for a benefit for this individual, it permitted it for you as a benefit. الْمَأْذُونِ لَهُ The one who's been given the permission. وَبِدُونِ أَذِيَّةٍ And without a harm مِنْ غَيْرِهِ from other than him. وَتَرَتَّبَ عَلَى الْفِعْلِ But the action, what comes out of it is what? That you're going to destroy the wealth of others. The, the Sharia, the legislator cannot lift the ruling from you here. An example will make it clear. مَنِ الضَّرَّ إِلَى مَالِ غَيْرِهِ أَنْ يَأْكُلَهُ The Sharia are permitted for you because of a maslaha. You're on a death and a living situation. The Sharia are permitted for you what? To eat food. You couldn't find accept the money of food of somebody else. فهذا إذا من الشارع لكل لكن المصلحة المكلف وبعدم اعتداء من المال فحين إذا يجب الضمان هي your reliable still the permission that the Sharia gave you here to take that person's food a uh, person's uh, camel or goat or sheep and to eat it and cook it that permission from the Sharia the reliability is still on you. You see, it's not a... So the scholars, they dealt with that in more and more. Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his qawaid, he speaks about it in more details. Good. The second type, the second type of the permission from the shari' is, إِذْنٌ مِنَ الشَّارِعِ لَا يَكُونُ مَصْلَحَةً مُبَاشَرَةً للمكلف. The shari'a, this issue that it permitted for you, there's no benefit for the person in it. أو فيه اعتداء, or rather there is in it, Transgression and harm. And in terms of min al-mali from the wealth which is owned. فَحِينَ إِذِ لَا يَجِبُ الضَّمَانِ There is harm that has a, or a, is transgression from the wealth itself is causing you harm. And the Sharia permitted for you huh, to get rid of it. This time there's no uh, uh, reliability on you in this issue. For example that would be what? If a camel came and it attacked you, the Sharia permitted for you that you're allowed to what? You're allowed to destroy it. You're allowed to get rid of? You're allowed to get rid of it and kill it. This time, فَهُنَا الضَّمَانُ لَا يَجِبُ You don't have to, you're not reliable for it. There's no consequences which you have to base. So, Sharia, does the legislator uplift from you the Dhaman? If it is a maslaha in it for you, personally, which you get from it, and there's no harm from other than, there's no harm for, there's, this, the wealth or the thing is not harming you, it's not causing you no problem. Uh, but you're destroying the wealth, you're eating it. 
then you have to pay back this one. The second one, and we mentioned the example before that, you're hungry. The second one is what? There's no maslaha in it for you directly. You're not getting a maslaha from it. It's that there's a transgression in it. It's harming you. The wealth or the issue of the person is their own, the thing they own is harming you. The sharia permitted you for you to get rid of it. And there is no daman on you in this regard. The second type of permission is the idnul malik. The owner who owns this gives you permission for it. And he said to you, take here is my car key, drive, go, go drive my car. أو في ما له في إبيه اختصاص فحين إذا يجب الضمان بالإتلاف نقول لا يخلو الأمر من حالين فحين إذا هل يجب الضمان at this point that you are you reliable for it he takes his key and he says take it go drive there's two situations أي يكون العبد مأذون له في أصل الفعل you it's either one of two you are originally permitted the, the essence of the action you're allowed to do it I mean he gave you the car key and he said go take it and you're a driver, you know how to drive. There's no man on you in this issue. He said to you, Akhi, here's my car keys. Go and drive. And you are a driver. You can drive. You are, you know, one who can drive. He gives it to you, go drive. Pay attention to this, this is tricky. If he thinks you're a driver, meaning he thinks you've got a license, you're allowed to drive and whatever, pay attention. لكن في و في حقيقة الأمر in reality you're lying you you're not a, you don't have a license and he doesn't know that and you do something to his car ah uh, you're reliable for it but if you are what you said and he has allowed you to drive his car and you did what he told you to do with the car you didn't mess about with it you did the job and it happens something happens to it in the you are not reliable it's like him driving his own car like he gave permission to himself to drive his car. There's nothing on you. A doctor, you give him permission. He's a doctor. He's not got a fake uh, certificate on the wall. He is a doctor. He is got this quali quali uh, qualification. He knows this. You gave him permission. You came to him. You slept on the surgery uh, bed. Whatever happens to you, and he's taken the, all the prior, all the all, all the what, all the precautions, and he took the something happened to you in the Sharia. Ah, there is no reliability on him. Ah, uh, very good. The second situation is The person is not a, the, the, the right individual for it. Um, you come to a doctor, you say, Doctor, uh, you come to a place, he stuck a, a, a certificate on there, and he played around with your body, he learned on you, and something happened to you. Later, you, after thorough research, you found out that he's not a doctor, he is يجب عليه فيجب عليه الضمان Anything he should cause harm to, he has to pay back. Where's the evidence for that? The messenger said من, تطي... من تطبب ولا يعلم منه طب فهو ضامن من تطبب Anyone who, done, who, who did serve, uh, surgery or dealt with people by pretending to be a doctor and he is not known to be a doctor فهو ضامن He's reliable. Ah, he's, a, he's held account uh, for what he done. Uh, Imam al Nasa'i Abu Dawood ibn Majah and Darakutni al Hakim narrated this. Wa kullu hukmi da'irun ma'illati wa hiya allati qad ujibat li shir'ati. Does your say li shir'ati? There's two copies. Yeah, yeah, what does your say? Li shir'ati. Mine does this li shir'ati. That's the way I memorized it before. My one says what their one says. Both of them are the same. Pay attention. This qaida is very important. And we're going to have to analyze this one. As it's the last qaida the book finishes with. There's no qaida after it. The author straight away. La la, astaghfirullah. There are a couple of qaidas after that. Sorry. There are. There are a couple of qaidas after it. Sorry, there's a couple of qaida after it. The author, what did he say? This qaid is important. Why? It is every ruling it revolves around the reason. It revolves around the reason. For example, a person killed and another person killed. Two people killed. 
Both of them what? They killed him. You are going to ask yourself the reasoning and the why did both of them kill him? One was by accident and one was deliberate. The ruling revolves around the reason, the illa, the cause. Does that make sense? Al hukmu, the they, they word it differently, they say, Al hukmu yaduru ma'illatihi wujudan wa adama. The hukm, the ruling revolves around this. If it's present, the ruling is present. If it's absent, the ruling is something else. This is what he wants you to know. So every ahkam of the sharia, it revolves around what? Da'irun, it revolves around the presence of that reasoning and the absence of that reasoning. So for you to say, this is wajib, you look into the reasoning. If you say this person, he's killed, has to be killed. Why? Because he killed the person. Are you with me? Okay. Another person, he didn't intend to kill him. He's going to be, he's going to have to pay, 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 pay what? Blood money. All of that is the illa, the cause. Are you with me? Also, what is looked at? What did they both use to? If the one who didn't deliberately choose to, if he used a sharp object, that all that object can do is to kill. It can't do anything else to a person. It will kill them. So, for example, he didn't intend to kill somebody, but he shot them. In his heart, he didn't want to kill them. You see? What hukum is it given? Are you with me? Another person who used an object that does not kill. Are you with me? Uh, but he intended to kill the person. With an object that doesn't kill. That a person won't die from it. He did it. The hakam revolves around this. The ulama. They talk about they talk about qatl, which is khata. They call talk about amd, and then they call shibhu amd, the one that resembles, and they speak about it. And then all of those ahkam, those rulings revolve around the illa. So because it revolves around the reasoning, we have to understand the illa then properly. So the illa, this, this people. First of all, the madhahib, the, the the madhabs regarding the issue of illa is three groups. There are three groups that stand regarding the illa. First of all. Then we, we have the Asha'ira, we have the Mu'tazila, and we have Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Asha'ira, we need to understand, they don't believe in the issue of means. Al Asbab, they negate it. They don't believe a sabab has an effect. So they negate Nafyu Ta'thir al Asbab. So because of that, for them, a illa, a reasoning, is just a sign of the ruling. It's just a sign, it has no effect. It's just alaba, it's amara for them. And it has no impact on the issue. The Mu'tazila, on the other hand, for them is different. The Mu'tazila believe what? That the description, the wasf, it, it's part of the essence of the thing. Are you with me? And it might sound a bit crazy to hear this. Like in, they believe that me taking a, a sharp object right now, are you with me? Sharp object. That Sha'ira, not the Mu'tazila, that Sha'ira, who said that it's just a sign. If you take a sharp object and you smack this cup with it, what was the illa, if I ask you, that broke the glass? What would you say? What was the reason? The illa is what? You smashing it. They believe no. Are you with me? They believe the hitting and the glass, both of them together, The breaking was a sign of it. There's no such thing as a means. It's a sign that the glass was going to break. So they took that path. The Mu'tazil, on the other hand, they said it's a description that affects the essence of the ruling. On the other hand, what do they mean? They mean there's no such thing as Qadr. And then the Mu'tazila don't believe in the Qadr and they negate it. And the Asha'ira, they, they negate the Asbab. Ahl Sunnati affirm both of them. For them, the illa is what? Wasful mu'athiri fil hukmi bi ja'lillahi Allah by Allah making it subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what they what, what have they affirmed? They will affirm the sabab and they also affirm the what? The qadar. We believe the means and we also believe what? That what Allah destined subhanahu wa ta'ala. Good. Good. That's Ahl Sunnah. Uh, 
um, how is the illa found in the Quran? If I look in the Quran and I want to find something, what is the reason for this? Can I find it in the Quran? Yes, there are ways, and two are the two are points that I'm going to mention. Inshallah, Taala. It comes back to these two. It comes back to these two. One which is known as Dalala to Sarih al illa. It is Dalala Sariha. It is clear that the reason for this is this. It's when Allah uses in the Quran min ajli. K. In. The usage of those words, they are example. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran, Kayla yakuna do la tabayna al-agniya iminkum. Kayla yakuna do la tabayna al-agniya iminkum. The K here is K ta'alil. That's what it's called. K la bu ta'alil. K. It's clear. Very good. Like for example, when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا حُرِّمَ ذَلِكَ That was made haram for what? مِنْ أَجْلِ مِنْ أَجْلِ الدَّاقَةِ Daqa here means what? Iddikhar, to store something. The reason why it was made haram is for storage. مِنْ أَجْلِ here is the reasoning, illa. You see that? The word إِنَّهَا إِنَّهَا مِنَ الطَّوَّافِينَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَالطَّوَّافَاتِ The word إِنَّ here shows what? The illa, the reasoning is this. So إِذَا نَكْ الْوَادْ كَيْ the word in, the word min ajli, they are what? Dalalatul sarih, the illa, the reason for this is this. The next one, brothers, is it's called Dalalatul tambihi ala al hukmi. Ah. The first one was what? Dalalatul sarih, Dalalah sarih ala al illa. The second one is called Dalalah tambihi ala al hukmi. The second type is it's there isn't the usage of the word min ajli or kay or in. But it alerts, it brings to the attention ha, this ruling. For example, when Allah wa ta'ala he said, Wasariku, the one who steals the male. Wasariqatu, and the female who what? Who steals. Fakta'u cut. Aidiyahuma their hands. Cut their hands. Look at this. Allah Taala He described something. What did He mention? He mentioned the description of the one who robs or steals and the women, or the female who steals. Both of them are what? A description. It's a wasf. Then Allah Taala, what did He attach to both of them? Straight away, He attached to both of them as a ruling. What is it? Cut their hands off from them. Are you with me? But what did He use to attach them with it? Fa, the fa, the fa. Allah used the fa. So the illa of why their hands is being cut, we took from it is what? It's because they stole. The illa of cutting the hand, this hukum, is for what reason? Because they stole. So we learn that anyone who steals, we what? Good. The ayah of Allah ta'ala, man baddala, anyone who changes his religion, faqtuluhu, kill him. Again, the sharia attached the issue of Changing your religion with killing. So anyone who changes his religion, kill him. Well, Imam al-Shafi'i, he took from this that the man here is min adwat al umum It's generalization, right? We took it before. Imam al-Shafi'i took the belief that if a Jew turns into a Christian, he also is killed. He changed his religion. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, man, badala, anyone who changes. Deen who his religion, whatever religion he has, fuck to kill him. So it is, it's not in Islam. Anyone who changes is what? Religion. Scholars refuted Imam Shafi'i on this issue. And they refuted him by saying that is right. Why? Then that would mean that the Christian that comes into Islam should be also killed. The Christian, the disbeliever, the Christian who turns into Islam, he changes religion, kill him. Imam Shafi'i replied by saying that, that's Am illa ma akhassahu dalil. General specification I have. Ah. In the deen in Dallahi Al Islam. The religion to Allah alone is what? Islam. The fact that the Sahabas came from that and the Prophet didn't kill them is a delil. The scholars they said the delil you brought is a delil against you. How is it a delil against you? Allah only referred to Islam as the deen. In the deen. So that deen is what's being used here. The deen here is Islam only. 
Also the fact that the Prophet never ever killed a Christian that became a Jew or Jew that made a Christian, he never killed him alayhi salatu salam is the evidence to, so, to show so. So that's the, that's the type to know, to what? To identify from the adilla to shara'iyya what is a illa or not. Okay? That's how to identify. Good. <coughs> Very good. Now, the illa, the reason, the striving, the ijtihad that is done by the fuqaha, the mujtahideen, for the ijtihad to take place, the efforts that they go through is of three types. One is called tahqiq wa manat al illa. The second one is called tanqih wa manat al hukum. And the third one is tahrij al manat. And those are three. Tahqiq wa manat al illa. The second one is, to, is called tanqih wa manat al hukum. And the third one is tahrij al illa. It's very important. Let's start with the first one, inshallah ta'ala. The first one is called tahqiq wa manat al illa. Tahqiq wa manat al illa. What does it mean? It is that there's a, a what? أن يكون هناك قاعدة متفق متفقا عليه أو منصوصا عليه فنطب فنطبقها على على جزئياتها. We have a قاعدة or we have a text. We take that ayah, uh, we take that قاعدة or we take that text and we apply it on all of its sub branches. That's called تحقيق مناط العلة. Example. Example, the Shari', the legislator, the Kitab and Sunnah, what has been permitted? It came to accept the witness of a reliable individual. Isn't that the case? A reliable individual, do we take his witnessing? Ha! Where's the evidence for that? Allah says, وَأَشْهِدُوا ذَوَيْ عَدْلِ مِنْكُمْ Take a reliable person. Ha! Take him as a witness. Now, we got the ayah, right? We got the text. What do we want to do? تحقيق مناطي هذا. We want to the issue here right now. We want to go into the issue right now. So we do. We're doing what? تحقيق. So what is the the شارع the ayah that the شارع mentioned, which is what that a person who is reliable, you take his what, you take his witness. فلان so and so is a reliable person. تقبل شهادته. وَفُلَانُ لَيْسَ بِعَدْلٍ So and so is not reliable, don't take his witness in. Naam. <coughs> but the question that arises now is, who is reliable and who isn't? Now we need to do it. The ayah is correct. No doubt it is. It's the statement of Allah. But now we need to apply this. So this is called تَحْقِيقُ مَنَاطِ الْعِلَّةِ we have to do with it what what? We have to do with it تحقيق مناط الحكم So we have to know who? Who is the person who is what? Who is adil, reliable? Um, this issue is very serious because it takes place here like this. Pay attention. Pay attention to this. This is very important. لو أكلت أنت مع مع إنسان you ate with somebody and you ate with them the meat of a camel لحم إبل you ate a camel meat you stood up and you don't wudu um your friend over here stood up and he wants to be the imam and he hasn't done wudu is it permissible for him to be imam for you you both ate camel meat both of you what you ate camel meat. Pay attention. This issue is very important. تحقيق مناط العلة helps a lot. You're both together. You've just eaten camel meat. He says to you, okay, we've eaten. He stands up. You go to do wudu. You come back. He hasn't done wudu. He wants to be the imam. Is it permissible for him to be the imam? The answer is فيه تفصيل. It's detailed. But yes or no answer. It is. إن كان هذا المخالف If this person, he opposes you in this issue, في أصل الحكم in the original essence of the ruling he believes that you don't do wudu from camel he doesn't believe that view he believes that the camel meat you don't do wudu from it ah and he believes what you're saying is abrogated نعم at that point جاز جاء جاز is permissible for him to be what الاتمام به 
It's allowed for him to be the imam for you. Why? Because he doesn't see the asal of the hukm which you, you see it right now. He doesn't agree with you on the asal. But what about if he says to you, he comes up to you and he says to you, um, Akhi, um, the second time, he, you both ate together again, he stood up, you, you, went, we'll do, do, you went to do wudu, you came back, and he this time, he didn't do wudu. So you asked him, Akhi, why didn't you do wudu? And he said, Akhi, we didn't eat camel meat. He's saying to you now, does he agree with you in the issue of the hukum of the camel meat? He does agree with you. Are you with me? Yes. And I, he said, I agree with you that camel meat, yanqudul wudu, it breaks the wudu. But what we ate wasn't camel meat. This we say is now ikhtilafun fi manatil hukmi. At this point, because the, the issue of you and him are debating about is tahqiqu manatil hukmi, huh? and it's not fi aslil hukmi, not in the original essence of the ruling, ah, la yajuzu lak al itimamu bi. You can't take him as an imam. He cannot be that. Imam. He has to be the ma'mum. Or you pray if he refuses, you pray by yourself. And then you see how important this issue is? Ah. The second type is called Tanqihu Manat al Hukmi. The first one was what? The first one was Tahqiqu Manat al Illa. The second one is called what? Tanqihu Manat al Hukm. What does Tanqihu Manat al Hukmi mean? It means um, this hukum, this ruling has many descriptions. Many characteristics that fall under it. Many. And we say that the descript from all those descriptions that have come, we say that that the 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 reasoning is this one. From what? From all of the other characteristics we have only pinpointed one. We don't choose the rest, we only speak to, to, speak to one. This is called what? Tanqihu malat al The word tanqih in Arabic means is to, it, is, it is to take things off from things that are attached to it. Tanqih is when you, and to naqih shay, to purify it, to clean it from something, to take everything that is on it. Example will clarify all of this. So you only take wasf for wahidan. Misal. Um, a person came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an Ansari man. He came to the Prophet in the month of Ramadan, daytime. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Halaktu, I am destroyed. Wa ahlaktu, and I destroyed. Faqala lahu, the Prophet said to him, Lima, how? He said, Ya jama'atu ahli, I had intimacy with my wife. Fi nahari Ramadan. In the month of what? Ramadan. The messenger said to him, I'tiq raqabah, free a slave. Al-Hadith. Hadith collected by Imam Malik, Shafi, Ahmed, Daru Qutin, Bayhaqi. The wordings are slightly different. Now, the Mujtahid is going to look at the Hadith. He wants to identify, the, he wants to find here, Manat al hukm from all of the things that are present. What are all the things that are present that he has? What he has is, that this individual, who asked the question, is the reason of the illa because he's a man? That's something that's there. Because the hadith mentions, anna rajulan. That can be illa. Is that the illa here? Will they say no? Was it because he was ansari? And that is the illa? We say no. Many things are, pro are, are possible in the hadith. Okay. This is called, we have to choose from all of those illa. Why, why did he have to sleeve, why did he have to free a slave? Is it because he was a man? No. Okay. Is it because he was Ansari? No. Okay. Is it, was it because he had intimacy with his wife? No. No. Huh? Is it because he had intimacy with his wife? No. no. Is it because he had intimacy with his wife in the month of Ramadan, daytime? Yes. Naam. That is what. So what did we do? Naqahna. We 
narrowed it down to the illa that's there. Somebody would come and he would choose another illa. And based on the illa he chose, his hukum would differ. Are you with me? He would say anyone who has intimacy in the month of Ramadan, any time, he has to free a neck of a slave. Are you with me? You say, Akhi, tanqihu manat al hukmi is incorrect for me. Good. That is called what? Tanqihu al manat. Very good. The third type is called takhriju al manat. Takhriju al manat means this ruling huh, doesn't have no uh, characteristics that fall under it. It doesn't have it. We have to go and bring a characteristics for it. Are you with me? For example, the Prophet ﷺ said, الذهبو بالذهبي Gold with gold it's riba unless it is what? Ha and ha and another riwayah goes the Prophet ﷺ said what? Ha and ha and here, here. Or uh, it is musawin, it's equal, the same. Are you with me? So the Prophet ﷺ is saying gold with gold is riba. A person has an old gold, and another person has a new, the new gold, and you say, look bro, 30 grams of my old gold, I'll give it to you. Or I'll give you, sorry, I'll give you 50 grams of my old gold, and you give me 30 grams of your, your new gold, because it's the new style. Mine's a bit used, it's a second hand. It's not permissible. Why? Because it's gold, and it's gold, and both of them are, the amount is not the same. Also, a person who buys gold from a person, but he says, Akhi, I'll give the money to you in installments. It has to be hat and hand. The money, all of it in his hand. Debt does not enter gold. To buy all at once. We took it in what? The topic we spoke about it there.